I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon netcast. And I'm glad you could join us this week because this is going to be a very, very geeky edition of DrBill.TV this week. Yes. So this is Netcast. Get, are you ready? This is Netcast number 199. <laughs> How neat is that? Anyway, we have much to talk about along that line in just a few minutes. First of all, I do want to remind you that we are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill the Computer Convention, and all the Tech Podcast Network podcasters have great shows for you. Yes, like Bagel Tech. It's an interesting name, isn't it? There's all kinds of good podcasts out there. I've mentioned Todd Cochran's get his name right, Todd Cochran. <laughs> I should know the name Cochran because of Zephram Cochran, the inventor of the warp drive. Yes, very famous. Anyway, I, I'm a trucker, what can I say? Um, yes, and of course, Jeffrey Powers with Geekazine, and uh, let's see, the Caffeination Podcast. There's just tons of great podcasts out there on Tech Podcast Network. So, good stuff. Okay, let's get into a couple of things. First of all, let me mention that our sponsors, uh, same as last week, are Carbonite and Citrix Systems Go to Assist Express. Excellent, excellent products, both of them. And right now, let's just take a moment and talk a little bit about Carbonite. Carbonite is a way that you can keep your system safe because if something terrible were to happen, and I've had terrible things happen to systems before, you know, I've had my share. I don't need any more, okay? But at any rate, a system such as Carbonite will back up all your data, and even if you totally lose your server, your PC, whatever it is that has your data on it, you'll have a backup off-site. So that's the beauty of off-site backup is it's off-site. And you will be able to get your data back. Because after all, those amazing photos that you got in your last summer vacation, you know, those really strange ones with the guy upside down on the surfboard going over the big huge wave that you're like, dude, that was cool. You'd lose that picture if you didn't have backups. So Carbonite is the way to go. And if you will use this URL right here, I know it's one of those strange bit.ly URLs, but that's okay. You can write it down or you can play the podcast back, this netcast, video netcast, play it back, get the URL, or you can even look in the show notes and get it. If you'll click on that though, You'll go to the Carbonite Offer page, and you'll be able to see the whole benefit of signing up with Carbonite. Cool stuff. Okay, let's talk about some of the geekiness that I mentioned. First of all, don't forget that our giveaway is still underway. And I'm just excited about all the folks that have been sending the emails. Now, all you got to do is put Roku to so it's hard to say, giveaway, like it says here on the screen, do that as your subject line, because that will automatically put it into the correct place in my email, okay? I don't know, I'm having problems speaking and saying words this week. Don't know why, but bear with me. Perhaps... I'll have to do some tongue exercises. I don't know. Anyway. So, the offer is basically we're giving away a Roku 2 HD thing. And I've got the box. Actually, it's, it's right in there. 
I won't go get it because then you'll just have a blank screen of just Tux and he doesn't say much. So I, I'll just leave it in there. It's pretty much just a cardboard box. I'm not opening it at all because I want you to have the the joy of opening the box and seeing the Roku brand spank you when you get it. Assuming you're the winner. And to win, you've got to send an email, like I said, to this email address right here, Dr. Bill at drbill.cc for computer curmudgeon. Yes, all you got to do is send an email with the Roku 2 giveaway in the subject line, and you are entered into the contest, which we will announce the winner next week. Aha! Yes, I'm excited about it. I really am. I like giving things away. It's cool. Anyway, so let's talk about... I, I look over here to the blog. <laughs> the blog, of course, being drbill.cc. Again, for computer curmudgeon. And this week, we're going to start with an item here. Microsoft buys more Linux support from SUSE. Aha! You gotta love that, because Microsoft buying Linux support is... It's, it's poetic justice. That's the best way I put it. It's poetic justice that Microsoft is paying SUSE for Linux support. Okay, let's see. As I put here, you got to love this. Microsoft's buying Linux support. How cool is that? Anyway, Linux vendor Novell Incorporated is no longer a standalone company, but Microsoft today announced an agreement with its successor, Attachmate SUSE Unit. See, Attachmate bought SUSE from Novell, and Novell bought SUSE from SUSE, who was a separate company in Germany. It's all very complicated. But at any rate, Attachmate SUSE unit to extend by four years the technology collaboration agreement and controversial patent protection deal that the companies announced nearly five years ago. See, five years ago, Microsoft came out and said that Linux trampled all over Microsoft's patents. I disagree. <laughs> As do most Linux folk. At any rate, as part of the extended agreement, Microsoft agreed to spend an additional $100 million on support certificates for SUSE Linux Enterprise as a way of helping customers run both Windows and Linux servers. Microsoft and SUSE say their collaboration has served more than 725, 725 customers worldwide to date. Only 725? Okay. Under their pact, the companies agreed to not sue each other's customers, how nice of them, for violating patents. The provision was criticized in the open source community as an implicit concession by Novell that Linux violates Microsoft patents, though Novell executives said repeatedly that that wasn't the case. And of course it isn't the case. Come on. Yeesh. Anyway. Next item. Next item is an odd item. It's, it's a personal item. And that's this. I... This story... I like to tell stories. This story is... Uh, it may come across as being like me patting myself on the back or elevating my ego. I don't mean it that way at all. Don't get me wrong, okay? Please understand. Part of this was the frame of mind I was in when I read this email. See, I get emails all the time from headhunters that are wanting to coerce me to become a Citrix administrator or a VMware administrator in Cucamonga. I like to say Cucamonga. Or Washington, D.C. or New York City or Seattle, Washington, or Palo Alto, California, or somewhere in the world that I'm not from. <laughs> I'm from here in the Piedmont, tell it, <laughs> the Piedmont Triad. I don't know what I tried to say there, but it didn't come out right. Piedmont Triad of North Carolina. See, I told you my tongue. It's just, it has a mind of its own this week. Anyway. <laughs> I think I tried to say telephone in there somewhere. I'm not sure why the, how that worked, but anyway. <laughs> so, headhunters <laughs> send me email all the time, and they try to get me to take jobs out somewhere 
in the hinterlands. And I'm never interested because I've got a nice job here. I like my job. I work for High Point Regional Health System here in High Point, North Carolina. I live like seven miles from work. I mean, what could be better? You know, if I lived in Seattle, Washington, maybe I'd be interested in the Seattle job, but I'm not. So there you go. So anyway, I get these headhunter emails all the time. And most of the time, like I said, they want me to be, you know, a senior VMware consultant or a senior Citrix administrator or something like that. I mean, you see the gray senior. They always throw that in there. Anyway, but this email <laughs> that I got from a headhunter said, we have a position you might be interested in, Winston-Salem, North Carolina, which is, you know, not far away. So I keep reading. It says, a open position for a computer operator at a beverage company in Winston-Salem. And I thought, a computer operator? It went on to say that they did uh, strongly desire someone with a bachelor's degree. So <laughs> I laughed a little. And I sent back a message to the lady who I think probably didn't read my resume very closely. I think what she did, to be totally fair, I think she went on Google and she did a Google search and put in Citrix and computer and my name popped up and she just sent the email without even really reading the resume. So here's what I sent back to her. Like I said, I was in a mood, okay? <laughs> you know how I get with these things. Anyway, your message gave me a good laugh. This is what I said, told her. Have you even read my resume? I have over 30 years of system admin experience and I'm professionally certified in VMware, Citrix, and Web Server Administration. And you send me a computer operator position? Maybe back in 1984? <laughs> But I'm a little farther down the road by now. I also have two doctorates, a PhD and an MD, so the bachelor's degree preference should be no problem. I mention it because you might send a similar message to someone with a less developed sense of humor than I. By the way, I'm not looking for work. Thanks for thinking of me, though. <laughs> and then I say here in the article, I said, so I was just jabbing a bit, but what do you think? Was it too much? Yeah. Maybe. Now, see, people would hear me tell the story and say, boy, you think a lot of yourself. Well, it's not that. I'm, I, I, I will tell you up front, I have a healthy ego, okay? I mean, I know that I'm cool. <laughs> and I know that I am indeed God's gift to computers. But that's beside the point. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> anyway, the point is, See, there are people out there taking me seriously going, man, this guy, what? <laughs> no, see, trust me, I'm a nice guy. I'm a big, fuzzy, nice guy. Anyway, <laughs> but this just struck me strange, you know what I'm saying? Now, like I said, back in 1984, 83, somewhere in that time frame, I'd have probably thought, my computer operator, hey, sounds good. But, you know, I've done my share of backups with the big 8-inch reel tapes, you know, and the little uh, Microvax cartridges, and lots of other ways of doing backups, including Carbonite that I mentioned a while ago. You know, now it's all off-site, over the internet. I mean, oh well, I'm just, let's just put it this way. <laughs> I'm really not interested in a computer operator position. Now, if you're a computer operator, more power to you. Anything to do with computers, I am down with. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, speaking of go to assist, <laughs> another word from our sponsor here. Citrix Systems Go to Assist is an awesome product. And if you are a computer dude, guru, whatever, you, like me, probably get a lot of calls from people that say, can you connect to my computer and fix it? I've got one guy, bless his darling heart. He'll accidentally click something and his, his file system will look all wonky to him. And it's just a preference. 
but he doesn't know how he got there. He accidentally hits it, and so he has me connect to his computer and fix the way the screen looks. Yeah, I know, but he's a real good friend of mine, okay? Normally, I wouldn't do that. Don't call me about doing that. I do it for this guy because he's a real close buddy of mine. <sighs> Needless to say, he's not all that computer savvy. But he does like to surf and pick up viruses so that I have to rebuild his system every six to eight months. Long story. Anyway, go to a system that allow you to connect to someone's PC like that and fix it for them. And then you become the hero. Ha ha! Gotta love that. So use this special bit.ly URL to go to the go to Exist express offer. Yes. And then you can take advantage of it, and it will be just a tremendous idea for you to go ahead and do that right now. Well, you might could wait until after the netcast is over, but if you want to pause it and go do it now, that's fine too. I'd encourage you. Go for it. So, anyway... Back to the blog. So, you know, you see what I'm saying about that message? I mean, I'm hoping I'm not too mean or, I don't know. I don't want to sound like I'm tooting my own horn. Although I did have a comment. Let me go to that comment because that was kind of cool. Uh, Liv here said, Interestingly, I know several very highly skilled IT people with no gr degree, no degree, tongue again, <laughs> That could run circles around someone with a bachelor's degree. I briefly thought I wanted to do IT for a while. Maybe if, I, if it meant working abroad. That sounds cool. I'd say this. I couldn't handle the competitive nature of the field, to be honest, here in the States. Too many competitive men who think they're all that. That they're computer gods. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm more like Jen in the IT crowd, I suppose. Ignorant, but seemingly capable of seeing the big picture in ways others can't. Yes, I just tooted my own horn. And I wrote back to her, My dad used to say, He who tooteth not his own horn, his horn remaineth untooted. I agree that many IT folks that I've met had zero degrees, but they had real-world experience. And that's, that's the bottom line right there. Experience trumps every time. Conversely, I've seen highly degreed and certified folks that couldn't even map a file share. Yes, I knew someone one time that had an MCSE, and they asked me a question, Hey, Dr. Bill, how do I map a file share? And I'm like, okay, your Microsoft certification is not worth the paper it's printed on. Didn't tell them that, though. Anyway, anyway so I told her, I com concur completely that degrees are not the be-all and end-all, neither are certifications. However, you know, if you work at a place that values certifications, there you go. Take the certification test. I don't like tests. Blah. Anyway. Next item. Happy Sysadmin Day. Friday, as I record this, this is a Saturday, so it would be yesterday, was Sysadmin Day. It was the 12th annual Sysadmin Day. And I was quite excited about it. Yes, indeed, because I am a sysadmin. And so I celebrated by writing it up on the board there at work. Happy sysadmin day. And then announcing it at the end of our little morning session that we do. We call it starting lineup where they read what the hospital folks want us to know about what's going on and things and educating us and all those good stuff. So at the end of that, I said, oh, by the way, remember, it's sysadmin day, so say something nice about your system administrator for a change. <laughs> I was just kidding. But at any rate, everybody kind of went, what? <laughs> they just don't know about sysadmin day. It's a very important holiday. Write it down. It's July the 29th every year. So make a note. <laughs> okay. News flash! I love this one. News flash! I users are dumber than other browser users. <laughs> you gotta love online internet surveys. And this particular company, a research company, posted an IQ test on its website and then compiled the results for more than a hundred thousand users. It's a lot. It found that there was no substantial difference between users of Chrome, Firefox, Safari, and Opera. However, 
Internet Explorer users had IQs below average. <gasps> yes. <laughs> oh, there's just so much I can say about that. You know, Microsoft users and so forth, but I won't go into that. This is kind of the obnoxious, arrogant version of the netcast, you know what I'm saying? Don't mean it to be. Like I said, I'm just a big, fuzzy, fuzzball, lovable dude. Okay. No! <laughs> yes, it was about time for that, wasn't it? <laughs> it's time for the Geek Software of the Week. Geek Software of the Week this week is... And... Linux. Interesting name. A-N-D Linux. With a lowercase a. They always put the lowercase a. And Linux. <laughs> Why do they why do they do that? I don't know. Anyway, the whole idea of AND Linux is that you can be running Windows as your operating system, install AND Linux, and then you can run Linux programs from within Windows. Now, this is what's cool. We're not talking about a dual boot situation. We're not talking about, you know, okay, I gotta shut down Windows and then I gotta bring up Linux and then I can run Linux and then I gotta shut down Linux and bring Windows. See, that's just a lot of trouble. If you want to run a Linux program within Windows, and here's the other cool thing, it's it's not like it's running in a sandbox exactly. You know, like a uh, like a what would you call it a uh, virtualized environment within Windows. It's actually running as a service, an empty service under Windows and allowing you to run the application within the same context as your regular Windows so that you can cut and paste between the different applications and you can use files, you know, like, for instance, let's say that you used uh, the Kate, uh, which is the KDE Kate graphic editor, and you really like Kate, so you want to use it under Windows. So you can bring up Kate, you can edit a file that's in your Windows directory using Kate. How cool is that? Anyway, so it's neat, and I tried it, and it's awesome. Now it is in beta. The you know the version that I use is in beta, and so it may have a few little glitches in there, but it's pretty cool. So you got to try it. Anyway, here's the description of it. And Linux is a complete Ubuntu Linux system running seamlessly in Windows-based systems. He says Windows 2000, but <laughs> that's pretty old. Windows-based systems, which includes 2000 XP, 2003 Vista. Windows 7, 32-bit versions only. Now, there's your caveat. It's 32-bit versions only, not 64, okay? Uh, this project was started for dynamism for the GP2X community, but its user base far exceeds its original design, and Linux is free and will remain so. But donations are greatly needed. <laughs> hey, I know where that's coming from. Yes, indeed. I agree. Support these guys that do these cool things like this, okay? Uh, and Linux uses Code Linux as its core, which is confusing for many people. Code Linux is a port of the Linux kernel to Windows. Although this technology is a bit like running Linux in a virtual machine, Code Linux differs itself by being more of a merger of Windows and the Linux kernel and not an emulated PC, making it more efficient. Xming is used as the X server and Pulse Audio as the sound server. And Linux is not just for development, but runs almost every Linux application without modification. This is awesome! So you should, if nothing else, you should get it, download it, install it, and geek out. Do a geek out. Geek out! because you'll love it. And once you use some of these applications, it will pull you away from the evil empire and get you into Linux. Ha ha! See, I have a secret scheme in mind. Ha ha! So anyway, that'll just about do it for this netcast, but remember our, um, contest for the Roku box. I've already had several people say that if they win, they'll watch the DrBill.TV show on their Roku. Ha <laughs> ha! Remember, it's gonna be a random drawing. You don't have to, like, coerce me or anything, okay? I'm gonna randomly have, probably have the Game Master randomly pick one out, therefore I won't even be involved. See? And then we'll give it away. And I'll probably then send you an email and say, hey, what's your regular mailing address? Because I'll have to send it to you. See what I mean? So, good stuff! Lots of geekiness. Been a very geeky netcast. 
So join us next time. Remember until then to... <laughs> Remember until then to do something. To be geeky. But the doctor, as always, is out of here. Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is a production of DrBillBailey.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.